Alright YouTube, so I wanted to do another life story, and you're probably wondering why I'm putting being a cyberbully and being on probation together as kind of a package deal and not treating them as separate entities. And that's because these kind of are interweaved. Uh, they're finally weaved together and you'll soon realize why. And some of my viewers are new and they maybe haven't seen all of my videos. And they may ask, well, why were you on probation? And to make a long story short, when I was 15, uh, the resource officer at my old high school found seven hydrocodone in my pocket. And I was put on probation for a while. And I was expelled for six months until I got six months of probation. So that was, you know, a, a jolly year. But if you want a more in-depth explanation, you can look up my video, Trip Report Hydrocodone. It's, you can go on my videos and look up Most Viewed or uh, search through the Trip Report playlist. You'll find it. But... Um... <clears throat> Okay, let's talk about court first. So, my final court hearing was probably late August. And that's when I was, you know, we had already gotten the plea bargain. <laughs> and um, what had happened was I basically had to admit to it. And then they're like, oh, did you receive special treatment if you said you admitted to it? You know, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, you have to do the normal no, 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 sir, shtick. And, you know, I was sentenced. And then right after that hearing, I had a mandatory meeting with my new probation officer. This was fall 2012. I was probably, no, I was 15 at the time. I would turn 16 that November. Um, my first probation officer, her name was Erin. And my parents didn't like Erin because before she talked, or she talked to me for a brief second, wanted me to take a little test. But she had a conference with my mother and father in the other room, and my mother and father said what would become rather uh, disappointing information to me that. Aaron didn't have high hopes for me. Aaron basically said right off the bat to my parents, uh, there is a very high chance your child's going to reoffend. And that always rubbed my mother the wrong way because she looked at me, Aaron looked at me rather more as a statistic than a, than a person, you know, um, that I was likely to reoffend just because a statistic chance said so rather than looking at every individual based on merit, you know, not statistical, more anecdotal type of person. That would be my mom. Um, <clears throat> but I never really enjoyed Aaron from the get-go because Aaron, and there's a few theories, I think I find this one probably the most plausible, but Aaron was a very, very mean and sharp and harsh woman and the reason we always thought she was like this was because she is a, a female in something that would otherwise be a more male dominated field and you know people kids pro probably wouldn't respect her as much so we said maybe because she's a female she feels that she had to be more aggressive to get the respect maybe a male probation officer would have easily. Because if you look at male probation officers, they're either really old guys or they're really young guys that are bodybuilders. And that's really someone you don't want to fuck with. Um, but... Aaron basically treated you as if you were subhuman because of something you did and expected you to fail. Uh, she wouldn't 
do like a rigid schedule for drug testing. She would, I think her tactic was trying to catch people off guard. So if they took something and they thought, well, I haven't been tested for a few months, the next week they get tested and screwed over. But that wasn't my first meeting with Aaron, or uh, first drug screening. My first drug screening was probably late September 2012. And I was in marching band. And in marching band, what happened was in my section, and I'm sure every section in every high school marching band of all time, the there's always the one freshman who takes the piss. He takes the shit uh, from everyone. And I'm not going to give the guy's name because I feel like his family would be the type to sue if I were to say his name. But we always made jokes about him. Uh, and this kind of started early on. We were driving home from a band competition, a, a marching band competition. And it was late at night, so we decided to play Truth or Dare, just a couple of us in the back. And, you know, someone mooned. Uh, I had my first kiss that night. I would take it back um, because, basically, my gay friend, my gay best friend was dared to kiss me. So my first kiss was a guy. <laughs> but um, I was dared to lick this individual's face that we always made fun of, and I went and did it. And he told his dad about it later that week, and his dad came back and he said, or his, he came back and he said, his dad said, if that were him, he would have kicked the dog shit out of you. And I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and um, there was another joke about his dad, and his dad, and I'm sure he had the right to be angry about this, his dad taught Pee Wee football. He coached Pee Wee football. Uh, just little kids football. So what the joke was, was that his dad was a, a pedophile. And I don't really think this kid really enjoyed his dad being called a pedophile. I know I wouldn't. But we also had a Facebook page for our section and marching band. It was a private closed group. Uh, the only people who could get in were the was the drum major who was an ex person from that section and the alto saxes and the mellophones. I played the mellophone. It's a marching version of the French horn, basically. And it was a private group. We just posted stupid shit. And one night, me and my gay best friend were on Uvu and had the stroke of brilliance to make a freestyle rap video about uh, the, the guy we made fun of a lot. So I did. I, you know, he never really seemed to get in trouble, even though you could clearly hear his voice in the background of these videos. And I might still have those videos, but I'm not going to go and look for them. Um, they're probably on my old uh, 2011 notepad. But I'm not going to go and look for these things. But I videotaped them. I was like, so-and-so, your dad's a pedophile. You know, I made a bunch of lewd comments, vulgarity up the roof, joking about uh, raping someone's ass with a 12-gauge shotgun. Stupid 15-year-old shit. And I posted it. People thought it was funny, but the next night, someone in that group showed their father, not the kid that, that I was making the rap about, but he then called, um, he then called the person I was making fun of, him, the, the father and the kid, and said, hey, did you happen to see this? And he goes into his son's profile, logs in, looks at it, videotapes it, burns it to a DVD, 
and uh, takes it into school the next day. But ironically, that next day I also had my first drug screening and everything went nice, you know. Aaron was kind of mean and pessimistic as usual. But it was, um, you know, it kind of went normal. She said I was, you know, very nice and I went back to marching band because, you know, you'd get taken out of class to go take these random drug tests. And uh, ironically, it was marching band, uh, the class. And apparently 30 minutes later, his guy I made fun of his and made fun of his dad as well his dad storms into the main office of the high school and basically screams and yells he's like what the hell is going on here and then he shows uh, my vice principal my assistant principal rather the resource officer and my probation officer what I had done probation officer is pissed calls my mom says uh, your son made a very, uh, very vulgar freestyle rap video, and he looks high as a damn kite. And, you know, I had, at this point, gotten my ass chewed out by several people, but she requested to have a mandatory meeting specifically to talk about this. Uh, the next week. And you you know, I thought this was just going to be... Okay. okay, so someone's dad's mad. This is going to be over. The Sunday, the following Sunday, I get a link from my gay best friend. And it's a newspaper link. And what this dad had done was contacted our local paper... Uh, journalist, one of the journalists for the local paper. This guy never made an attempt to talk to my parents, uh, tried to settle it the old-fashioned way, you know, come over, meet us. My parents are old-fashioned, respectable, humble folks. Uh, but it still amazes all of us how he never even made an attempt to contact us, never even made an attempt to get our number. But he goes and contacts, I don't know if he's got connections or what. Sorry about that. But, uh, oh, that's Brethren Fudge, actually. <laughs> if you know I'm on YouTube. But I'm thinking he had connections or someone in his family had connections. And the newspaper article was basically about me and what I did. Now, since I was a minor and I didn't put myself out there publicly, it was a private group. There was no way to basically give my name out because people wanted my name. They were out for blood in their fake moral little town Indiana outrage. Um, but, you know, they gave the details of the video, uh, they never actually put up the video. Now, this kid was also supposed to go on to Channel 2 News for a story about it. I think he refused. I don't even think he wanted it to get this far. I honestly think this was more of his father's doing. And my mother always asked, if I were to run into this guy's father in like a supermarket or just in general the public and he recognized me and came up to me what would I do and you know uh, I'm a changed person I would probably just say uh, sir I did make that video about you it was a different time I was younger I was much more immature and uh, while I do realize that it was an inappropriate joke, I would like to finally apologize for making these vulgar comments about you and your son. 
and I would expect him to be the type to freak out, kind of want me to actually get mad at him, but we'll never know. <laughs> but, you know, that newspaper article gets released, and now everybody knows my name at that school. They have my name, they have my number. Uh, so I'm getting constantly asked, hey, are you Austin blank? Not going to give out my last name here. Um, and I s kept turning around because people kept saying Austin. I kept looking at them. But what I found odd was a bunch of uh, football kids, guys who are on the football team, were now stalking me around school. Uh, touching me, pushing me around, and I finally had enough and went to my AP and said, hey, I don't really know what's going on here, but I think this guy's dad or this guy's kid, uh, they have something to do with this because I cannot for the life of me find any other reason why a bunch of football players are messing around with me, bringing the kid I made fun of up. And, you know, I got talked to by the principal, and, you know, that started a semester-long worth of jokes about me being, you know, the next Columbine-style shooter. It was just fucking ridiculous. But I finally got the, the... There was a kid who was actually, like, shoving his hands down my mouth and being a little too... Uh, abrasive and that kid finally I kind of you know I told the AP about him assistant principal he got put into an in-school suspension for a day uh, those kids never fucked with me again but This uh, So I've probably had four or five different people chew my ass about this, chew my ass out about this now. And I finally have this probation mandatory meeting with my mother. And my drug results haven't come back yet, even though I was clean. But, you know, everybody always likes, and you'll even see it on YouTube video, videos. Everybody says, oh my god, this guy's totally high right now, even though I'm never high. It's just the way I am. Excuse me. But it started calmly. She said, so why'd you do this, Austin? And I said uh, a joke. And she blew up on me. Aaron said, you know that you could be charged with this. You're already on probation. And your, your sentencing's going to be harder if you actually get charged with something. And at this point, you know, I'm trying to explain. I didn't even mean for this to be something big. I didn't even want this to be national, or not na but like local headlines. And I'm screaming back at her while my mom's sitting there like, oh, Jesus, shut the fuck up, Austin. And I'm like, I didn't even mean it to be a big joke. Or I didn't even mean it to be serious. I meant it just to be a joke. And I think she understood and I think Aaron also understood that I was getting tired of being, you know, reamed for doing this. Um, what happened was after that, she asked if I had any more questions. And apparently, according to my mom, I can't really remember this, but I was in such a rage that I basically was beat red and you could hear my teeth like gnashing together and grinding and she just I guess my my probation officer Aaron just dismissed me at that point but she's like delete your Facebook I'm on Facebook I'm going to look up your name if you don't have it deleted by Wednesday there's going to be trouble um I said oh okay uh, she said, because at this point I needed permission to even be out of uh, the county for more than a day. And I needed permission, exclusive written permission that says, like, hey, I can go out of the state. And, you know, marching band, we went to Illinois a lot. Like, the Kankakee County area. 
I think that's what it's called. And basically, she said, if you do this shit again, I'm not signing your slips to go out of state or out of the, the county. And I never did it again, and now I'm getting pulled out of class every day because they're trying to solve this truth or dare thing. Because they're trying to stack up evidence that would suggest, because the kid's dad was out for blood. He wanted to get me charged with something. He was actually trying to find out if I had any existing charges, and you know, uh, you can't really give out that type of information about your students. So now, since he can't uh, basically defame my name, you know, defamation, spreading rumors, because I know he was behind these football kids fucking with me, uh, he's trying to get me charged with battery with a bodily fluid because I was there to lick his son's face. And I, I think I, like, licked my hand and tapped him a little bit on the face, but his son said I licked him on the face or something. And they're trying to stack up evidence that would suggest I didn't. So I keep getting pulled out every day. It's my probation officer in this, like, teacher's uh, supply room. Probation officer to my left... Resource officer to my right, and I'm looking like dead center onto my AP, my assistant principal, and they keep asking me, who did it? Who is all involved? And I keep saying, I can't tell you that. Because I don't want anybody else to get in trouble. But every time my probation officer was there, I did not acknowledge her. I didn't look at her. I didn't even act as if she was there. She never asked any question. I always thought she found it kind of odd. But uh, that was that. And I finally gave in. I was like, here's a list of names, blah, blah, blah. And the story going on, because that would be probably 20 minutes in itself. I, you know, I'm getting continuously pulled out. Give p other people's names. But they now realize the most... I mean, they were happy because... Let me tell you something. Like, the third day, I was refusing my... Pro uh, not probation officer, but my resource officer at the school freaks out, he says, God damn it, I'm trying to get you to not be charged with battery. And if you are not willing to uh, give me names here of other people involved with the activities of that night, you're making my job hard. I can't even guarantee that you're not going to be charged if you don't give me the names. Blew up on me. I double-checked to make sure these people wouldn't get in too much trouble. And he said, no, God damn it, they're not getting in trouble. So, I, I said, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. He said, okay. Basically, I couldn't be charged with battery. There wasn't enough evidence. The most they could do for disciplinary action was to give me a three-hour after-school detention. That was it. And you know what? Uh... I was fine with that, you know, it was much <laughs> I would much rather get that than having a, an additional felony on my record as a minor. Um, but some time moves on, and Aaron, my probation officer, actually gets promoted. It, we're, we're past the cyberbullying stuff, yeah, that was hung over my head for a few years after that, but uh, I don't really think people give a shit about it anymore. And I just, I think it goes into the topic of people who actually care about their job. People who want to make a difference in the world. Aaron got promoted to being like the head supervisor of this county in Indiana's probation juvenile department. Hold on. Sorry, my coils burnt. Not really getting those fat clouds. But uh, anyways, I got a new probation officer. So she got promoted. I got a new probation officer. Uh, Mexican man. Big buff dude. Name was Adam. 
Um, wouldn't even know his last name. Wouldn't even give it out. Adam was a complete 180 from Aaron. Adam was a nice guy, willing to work with you. He, the first time I met him, he's like, so I'm your new probation officer. My name is Officer Adam. You can call me Adam. I don't really care. Um, you look like a nice kid. I think we're going to get along famously. But I just want you to know, if you do the type of shit you did to land yourself in the newspaper, I will probably have to detain you. And I said, I understand, sir. I'm not really in the business for trying to do that again anyway. And there was such a contrast between Adam and Aaron. Aaron, I don't know if it was, she was pessimistic. She was in the job for a while. She just didn't enjoy where she worked. But Aaron basically just assumed the worst of everyone, treated them as subhuman, her uh, kids, and basically almost expected you to mess up. Like, it was kind of like a sink or swim, but with this, you're probably, I know you're going to mess up, you little fuck, kind of undertone to it. And with Adam... He didn't see you as a statistic. He saw you as a person. He looked, he wasn't, he was optimistic. He looked for the best qualities and everybody he had to uh, deal with. And I think that was a very, that's a very noble quality in someone. Especially in that type of job where you probably get the bottom of the barrel, shittiest kids. And he said... Uh, one time, I was actually falling behind in math a little. He minored in math at his old university. He actually took the time out. He said, well, go to your locker real quick. Get that book. We'll, uh, we'll review it. He went over it for 25 minutes until I got it. And I actually went on to ace that Algebra 1 test. I was shocked. And, you know, Adam to this day would be in my top 10 most influential people. Don't think he'd be in the top five, but he'd be damn near close to being top five material. Uh, and I would actually keep in contact with him for the rest of high school. I got off of probation in March 2013. So I was excited I could finally have friends spend the night again. I could finally go out of state. I could go into a different county for hours at a time. But uh, my junior year, he ran into me. He said, how's it going, Austin? Hope you're doing uh, wonderful. Um, shook my hand, laughed really loud, said, welcome to hell. I think that's like the first week or two of junior year. Then senior year, I actually had to make up a credit. And he asked me, oh, why are you in summer school? It's like, I uh, had to make up a credit. Um uh, I had a stressful last semester of senior year. Wasn't able to um, complete all my classes. He said, that, you know, that's okay. I hope you can graduate. He said, I hope you pass so you can graduate and move on with your life. I said, thanks, sir. But he introduced me to this girl named Allison. Now, I had known about this Allison girl. She was, like, either pretending to be or was full-on, like, the kleptic gypsy type. Allison had just failed a drug test. And he said, Allison, meet Austin. Austin didn't mess up. You messed up. And he said, you know, he was talking. I was like surprised that he would actually air that information out. He said, you got any information for Allison? I said, listen, look at yourself. And acknowledge what got you into this boat. You may like drugs. But I'm sure you don't like them enough to spend time in jail for. While you are in juvenile hall, I would try to work on... Uh, conquering vices of yours. Uh, not giving in to impulses. 
And I think she respected me because I didn't come at her so harshly. And we never spoke after that, but next, the next year I was, uh, or I think, no, it, I was in town sometimes. She never come up, strike a conversation with me or anything, but she would look at me, and it was like that look of respect. Uh, that's about it, YouTube. <laughs> Probably my longest story to date. Uh, peace out.